If you've been thinking about exploring FM on the 220 band, this little radio from Baofeng is an inexpensive way to get started. Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel, where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of electronic gadgets that catch my eye. If you find this video helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. In this video, we'll be looking at an inexpensive tri-band FM HT from Baofeng. It's called the UV S9 Plus. It sells on Amazon for about $30 as this is being recorded. What makes this radio unique is that it covers the 2 meter, 70 centimeter bands like most analog HTs, but it also covers the 1.25 meter band that's often referred to as the 220 band. Now, to ensure maximum confusion, Please note that there is a similar radio with the same name that is a Tri-Power HT. Be sure to look carefully at what you're ordering. The Tri-Band radio comes with two antennas. More on that later. There are a couple of reasons why the 220 MHz band is not included in most analog FM HTs. First is that there's not a lot of activity on the band. For example, Repeaterbook.com shows that where I am at in Arizona, there are 137 2 meter repeaters, 232 70 centimeter repeaters, and only 21 220 repeaters. The trend is the same in neighboring California. Again, Repeaterbook shows 728 2 meter repeaters, 1243 70 centimeter repeaters, and only 298 220 machines. This means that if you're near a 220 repeater, you'll have no trouble accessing it and have a nice home for a group of local hams to rag chew. Another reason there aren't many 220 HTs out there is that most countries don't allocate hams frequency in this band. The U.S. is fairly unique in this regard. That means a 220HT has a limited market worldwide. Let's take a look at the Tri-Band UV S9 Plus and see what you'll be getting. Okay, so let's take a look at what you're going to get when you get your uh, Baofeng UV S9 Plus. First, you're going to get the radio itself, and you can see that it's here. It's, uh, it's a pretty nice little radio. You can see how it fits in my hand, and it's pretty typical to most of the Baofeng models. You're going to get two antennas with this radio, and on the one antenna, you're going to see the inside ring there is yellow, and that's the antenna for the 220 band, uh, so that you're going to end up with 220 uh, antenna for 220 and then a dual band antenna for 2 meters and 70 centimeters. As we tour the radio, it looks just like <laughs> pretty much all the rest of the little Baovang UV series. On this side, we've got the push to talk, a call button uh, that will move into the FM receiver mode. And if you press it along press, it'll give you an alarm or flashlight here on the top. The volume control is right here. And so you can turn on how loud you want the radio to be. On the front panel, you can switch between the VFO and the memory modes or channel modes. Uh, the AB button switches the radio from uh, transmitting on the top register to transmitting on the lower register. And then um, on this side, we've got an opening for the typical K1 style uh, double socket um, receiver for um, either microphone that you may want to plug in there, the little headset secret agent style uh, earpiece that comes with the radio, or your programming cable if you want to use the CPS. We'll talk about that in a minute. This radio C has a socket here, and that's in the battery, so you can charge the battery directly uh, with a, a round pin style uh, charger, so that's pretty handy. The battery there is on the back. It comes with a belt clip, 
the belt clip I have mounted, as you can see, and it's mounted to the radio and not to the battery itself. And so that's pretty much the tour of the radio. Let's take a quick look at the menus since we're here. To access the menus, you simply press menu, and then you can work your way through the menus um, by pressing the up and down buttons. There are 40 menus on this, and they are the typical Baofeng UV5R menus. They do the same thing. To make a choice in your menu, for example, here I'm on the squelch menu, so we can set the uh, menu, menu, press it again. Notice the carrot moves to the second row. Now I can make changes to squelch using the up and down. When I get the squelch level I want, I press menu again. The radio says confirm. And at this point, I can go to another uh, menu item or I can exit using the exit button. So if you're familiar with those other UV5s, you're going to be familiar with this one as well. So with that as an overview, let's take the radio over to the power meter and see what you can expect in terms of power output on the various bands. So here we have the S9 Plus connected to my MFJ 874SWR and power meter. And we have the um, uh, output of the power meter going to a dummy load instead of a uh, an antenna. So we're not getting out. So let's start with the 2 meter band and see what we get with the high power setting. We're looking at the bottom row. We've got it set, as you can see, to 5 watts, and it's reading right at 4.5 watts. So that's pretty good for a 5-watt radio. Let's go to the 70-centimeter band. Two. Now, on the 70-centimeter band, let's take a peek at what we have. Again, we've got the control set at 5 watts, so we'll be reading the power on the bottom band. And it's about 3.6, 3.6 for the bottom band there on the 70 centimeter. Now I'm going to go up to one of my 220 frequencies. Again, broadcasting into the dummy load on high power in the 220 band. And we're at about 4.1, 4.2. Go up there again. Yeah, right at about... Uh, 4.1. So in the 220 band, that's what we can expect to see. And so that gives us four and a half at two meters, 3.7, 3.5 at uh, 70 centimeters, and about uh, 4.0 at 220. So that's what you'll be looking at for power output. Here's a snapshot look at your primary customer programming software options. The Baofeng software is available online. It's the same as the UV5X3 radio. It looks just like the UV5R software with the same limitations too. So here we have the Baofeng software loaded up on my computer. You see it says UV5R even though I've downloaded the uh, file for the UV5RX3 uh, from Radiotity. And so let's get started. And so what we do here is we just have the basic Windows kinds of things up here. And there are a couple of important points to note when you start this. First, you want to go to port to make sure that the port is right. Now, it'll only give you the ports that it senses as active. And I know that the COM port 5 is what I want, so I'm going to set OK. And then I'm going to go here to the read button to read from my radio. I have my radio turned on and the programming cable connected, so I'm going to press read, and then I'm going to press start. And you can see that it's loading the information from the radio. And you can see here now that I have all of the channels that I've programmed in to the radio. To make a change on one of these, you just, you know, basically click on it and you can make a change, uh, type it in directly if it highlights, otherwise it'll come up with a uh, drop down box. In this case, it's a UHF call. And so you'll notice that I don't have tones, my transmit and receive frequencies are the same. I've got it set for high power, wide bandwidth and so forth. And then I have a name because I have the radio set to uh, display the name as opposed to the frequency when I'm in the channel mode. So as you can see, I have a bunch of channel information 
uh, already loaded here into the radio. Uh, you'll also notice that I don't have a, uh, an import or an export command, and that's the drawback of this software. So I've read the information here. I can make changes by clicking. That means I, when it's blue like that, I just type in a new frequency. Here I have choices for uh, up and down. I just make a select selection from a drop-down box and so forth. And so I have my frequencies arranged with my 2 meters here, my 220 frequencies here, my 440s here, and at the bottom of the list I have my uh, weather channels from around the country. And so uh, that's what I have uh, here. Now if I go into edit I can look at my optional features. That's going to give me information, things like timeout, timer, squelch level, and all the other menu information to include colors. Please note that there is not three bands here. So to program uh, 220 frequency into this radio, you simply type a 220 frequency into the frequency range and it's going to recognize it as it is uh, technically a VHF um, uh, frequency band. So don't let that concern you. When you're done, you can press save, give it a name, save it in a safe place, uh, and then write it back to the radio. And the write works the same way. Uh, it comes up with the right dialog box, start, and then you can see the progress as the information goes back to the radio. The little green light on the radio is flashing, indicating that data is being transferred back and forth. So there we are. That's a quick snapshot of the Baofeng software. A better choice is to use Chirp. Select Radiotity as the brand and select the UV5X3 model for Chirp. It makes programming and managing a bunch of channels much easier with it. So here is the Chirp display. Uh, it opens up in a, in a blank screen and uh, I've got my radio connected via the uh, K1 connector on the programming cable and plugged into a USB on my computer. Here I'm going to start by going to radio. I'm going to go to download from radio. I'm going to pick COM5. It's only going to show the ports it senses and I know 5 is what I want. I'm going to use the brand Radiotity and I'm going to use the model number UV5RX3 which is essentially the same radios we're dealing with. It's going to give me the basic instructions on what it wants me to do. I'm going to click OK, and it's cloning the radio. So the little LEDs on my uh, programming cable are flashing, as is the transmit button on my radio. So here's a display, and up here there are two. You can see memories, which are the channels. And as with the other uh, display, if you click on something and it just shows blue, that means you can enter something from the keyboard. Uh, same with the name. Here it shows a drop-down box for the tone if you're using uh, digital or uh, analog tones. And so this works pretty much the same. One of the things that I do like about Chirp, it makes it so much easier, is that you can insert a row above, insert a row below. You can delete frequencies, shift the blocks up, uh, and so forth. So it gives you a bunch more uh, control as well as doing things like hitting um, control shift that will highlight uh, the entire range of things that you can do some moving around to make uh, the frequencies in the order that, that you find handy. So I have mine arranged in the uh, 2 meters here, I've got 220s here, and I've got 440s here, and then within each of these groups I've got local repeaters and then repeaters that I, I might have an opportunity to uh, access if I was traveling around the state. Now one of the other things that's really cool about this Chirp is that you can import uh, from data sources uh, outside of the program. And so if you were to export here, and you can see here that if we scroll down, um, we've got all of our channels listed. And we could go to File and uh, Export. And so we could export this as a CSV file or we could import a CSV file from Excel, for example. The other thing we can do is we can import from a data source. So in this case, we can go to repeater book. We can do a political query, which means, um, you know, state and local. So I'm going to go from Arizona. I'm going to look at the counties. I'm in Maricopa County. I'm going to look at the 1.25 uh, meter band, and then I can import and then this gives me 
um, the repeaters that are here in Maricopa County. I can make changes to the numbers using these buttons below here. Uh, and then I can insert them here into my uh, channel listing, which makes managing the channels uh, so much easier. I've already got these loaded, so I'm just going to cancel out of this. And so that's a quick look at the channels part of Chirp. If we go into settings, instead of having a whole screen full of information that we can see at once, Chirp puts it into basic, advanced, other, and so forth. And so this switch level was three. You may have remembered that from the previous um, uh, part of our video today. Uh, battery savers, display modes. I've got them both uh, for A and B on the display as names. I've got purple, blue, and orange as the colors for these various uh, LEDs, depending on what the radio is doing. I can move to advanced settings. Uh, I can move to service settings. Some of this stuff, I don't even know what it is. Uh, it's available uh, for other radios, perhaps. And my uh, FM preset uh, channels, where if I set this to FM, that's where it's going to start. And then I can start dialing up the FM band and so forth. So as you can see, Chirp is much easier to deal with, much more uh, comprehensive. And so my recommendation would be to program your radio using Chirp as your primary um, CPS. Now with the programming done, you'd simply go here to upload to the radio and it works just like the download. And so since we haven't made any changes, I'm not gonna do that, but know that this is the menu where you would find that uh, as opposed to uh, some of the icons you saw on the previous software. So that's a quick overview of the UV S9 Plus using Chirp. When all is said and done, this is an inexpensive Baofeng radio. It works just like the UV5R with the same menus and same characteristics. If you like the UV5R, you'll probably like this little tribander. From my back patio, I was able to hit the repeaters I usually hit in the Phoenix area. Just remember to change out the antenna when selecting a 220 band channel. There are tri-band antennas out there if you plan to jump back and forth a lot, so you might want to give one of those a try. If you're looking to explore the 220 band FM activity in your area, this little Baofeng is an inexpensive way to give it a try. 73 and thanks for watching.